fortunes have turned for the better. They've been left a legacy of 2,000 pounds. Now they haven't got spent any of their inheritance yet, but the, that doesn't stop them spending the money that they've borrowed from their neighbours on the strength of their legacy. In this scene, we meet the Boyle family again and two new characters, Mr. Benton, Mary's intended, and an old back parlour neighbour, Mrs. Mandigan. The scene is set in the Boyle sitting room. I'm afraid I can't venture to express an opinion on that point, Mrs. 
boy. Dogma, there's no attraction for me. Oh, I forgot you don't hold to us. What's this you said you are? At the office, Mrs. Boy. At the office, Mr. Quash, and the name of the office. At the office, Mr. Quash, and the name of the office. Tell her, Mr. Bacon, tell her. Tell her, Mr. Bacon, a few words. It's interesting, it's the existence of an all pervading spirit, the life breath. This life breath is called the prana. <laughs> the prana, what a comical name. That's the prana. This, this the prana. I wish, Jack, wish, wish. <coughs> How is a man depends upon his sympathy with the spirit? Many who have reached a high stage of excellence are called yogi. Ah, uh, yogi! I see you on the stem of the street. I'm very curious to listen to what you get I wouldn't care to bend in that sort of belief at all. It's an odd religion, it's curious. For no one to believe me if they weren't curious. Take the real Dublin people, for instance. They know more about Charlie Chaplin and Tyne Mix than they do about St. Peter and St. Paul. <laughs>